In this video, we'll be setting up a Gantt chart. There are five steps to creating a Gantt chart. Step one is to identify the tasks for your project. Step two, you define your overall time scale and deadlines. Step three, you identify the basic order of tasks. Step four is defining the relationships between those tasks. And step five is to tie each activity with a time. Step one is to identify the tasks associated with your project. One tool that you can use to do this is called a work breakdown structure. In a work breakdown structure, the tasks needed to accomplish your project are subdivided into smaller subtasks, each of which are well-defined and manageable by the team. This is an example of a work breakdown structure for Houston We Have Coffee. The team divided their project into three main design blocks, conceptual design, physical prototyping, and communication. Within each of these design blocks, they further subdivided into individual tasks. So in the conceptual design, they were designing a crank, a valve, and a roller housing. In looking at the conceptual design of the crank, the team further subdivided it into individual subtasks. When making a work breakdown structure, you want to continue to divide your tasks until you have very discrete, well-defined, and manageable subtasks. These subtasks can then be used to estimate how much time they will take, as well as to assign them to an individual on your team. Step two is to define the overall time scale and deadlines for your project. First, you need to figure out the time block that you want to use in the top of your Gantt chart. A one rule of thumb is to use about 1 20th of the overall duration of your project for that time block. For example, a team that works for the course of a year might want to use a two-week time block, whereas a team that works for a semester might use a one-week time block. It's important to define and know for yourself the start and finish dates for your project, as well as to identify any intermediate deadlines during the project that you want to make sure that you include in your Gantt chart. In the rest of this video, we're going to be constructing a Gantt chart for building a treehouse. This is a tree house for your younger brother and sister, and you need to have it done in six weeks for their birthday. In order to apply step two and select our time block for our project, we first looked at the overall length of our project, which is going to be six weeks. So our options for time block are one week or one day. And for this project, we are gonna select one day. Step three is to identify the basic order of the tasks. You start to accomplish this step by creating a list of all the tasks that you identified in your work breakdown structure. And then you start to take those tasks and you put them in some sort of logical order and identify the timelines that are needed for those projects as well as the relationships between tasks. Here is a list of tasks for our treehouse in no particular order. We need to design the walls. We need to create the blueprints. We need to decide how we're going to attach the treehouse to the tree and then do it. Now, let's put a basic order or structure to this list. For example, we can't build our treehouse before we order the supplies. We can't create our windows before we've built our walls. Step four is to define relationships between the tasks on your list. Some of these relationships might be concurrencies, dependencies, or lags. A dependency occurs when there's a task that cannot be started before another one is completed. Dependencies occur several times in this Gantt chart, everywhere that wood must be cut before it is used to build a structure. A concurrency are tasks that are independent of one another and thus may occur simultaneously. An example in our Gantt chart is that we can order materials at the same time that we're planning for the building process. A lag is a delay or a waiting period 
which results from an out outside factor or situation. And you need to include these time lags in your Gantt chart. An example is, after you order supplies, there will be a several day time lag before these supplies arrive and are ready to be used in your project. Step five is to tie each activity with the amount of time it will take to accomplish that activity. So you need to answer the two questions. How much time will it take to accomplish a task? And how much elapsed time will occur while you are working on that task? For example, if we look at the task of installing a roof, that task might take actually eight hours to accomplish. So when we answer the first question, how long will it take to complete this particular task, we would say eight hours. However, you might choose to do this task over the course of one day, two days, or an entire week. In our Gantt chart, we have defined that this project will take a week. The challenge now is to take all of this information and put it into one Gantt chart. So you have your ordered list of tasks, and you need to define using your time bars when you will accomplish each of those tasks, remembering to account for the dependencies that we described earlier. Shown here is the final Gantt chart for creating a treehouse for your brother and sister in the next six weeks. In summary, we have defined the five steps that it takes to create a Gantt chart, as well as given you an example. Following this process effectively sets your team up for great success.